Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Halo Reach. This is uh, part 2 of episode 10, or I probably will put episode 11, I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we just finished doing. And, you know, it was uh, alright so far. Uh, what to do? This is still post-commentary because I had to record both these parts. I, I decided to kind of separate these parts mainly for the fact of... Uh, I don't know. I think you guys would rather prefer it be a little bit, um, though I would, um, a little bit shorter so it's easier to digest at one time. Even though you could use the watch later tab, but some people still haven't figured that out, so I might as well try to help them out a little bit. Uh, you know, the more you get used to YouTube, uh, you take things for granted. It seems easy to you, but it might be a little bit more difficult for other people to figure out how to use, and, uh, some people don't actually have. YouTube subscription, but I don't know how they find my videos, but random chance, whatever. So, really don't know what to talk about. I mean, they kind of talked about games I was playing recently. Oh, yeah. Talking about games I've been play playing recently. <laughs> I did, uh, since I missed Star Wars Battlefront 2 so much, I finally did buy that on Steam, because it was quite cheap, about 10 bucks. I think totally worth it. And, uh, yeah, so, play a little bit of that. I haven't actually, you know, kind of turned on the game in quite a while, but... Eh, what are you gonna do? You get in the mood for it, sometimes you'll play it, most of the time you won't. It seems to happen with a lot of my games. I have a giant collection that I don't play most of them. But whatever. So, yeah. Right up here is just another... What, what part of this mission is this? Oh, yeah, we're still trying to go up to, like, the roof of some building. I'm not exactly sure what the objective is. I just know to clear out the aliens. Usually what it's like. So right at this spot, you see I have four allies on me. But for some reason, you can see that one ally failed to jump and died. So, uh, well, now I know why all, f all three of them died. They just failed that jump horribly. I'm not even watching it. I almost got blown up by a plasma grenade right there, but... Thankfully, uh, it didn't kill me, so yay! <laughs> so I'm lucky, a little bit lucky there. Well, I'm really lucky. I usually don't notice those plasma grenades after not playing Halo Reach for how long? Was it two, two and a half weeks? I don't know. I usually played a little bit more, but Xbox is uh, fading from my preferred gaming method now. So yeah, at first I came up here, I thought he was an enemy, so I was about to smash this dude. <laughs> But uh, it would have been all right. So uh, mainly for the fact of that he is a infantry soldier. So I guess uh, he put his life on the line. I mean, death is a possibility, so it doesn't really matter. But the civilians, I'm not allowed killing those. Although if you do kill enough Marines, uh, as in all Halo games, they will turn on you and start focusing your fire and trying to kill you. If you play smart. You definitely can take out you know 10 Marines or so. No problem, unless they all toss grenades everywhere and have rocket launchers. That's a real problem. And speaking of rocket launchers, I just found one. <laughs> uh, rocket launcher is so very powerful, so uh, you just gotta kind of save it for those uh, specific moments when uh, it would really, really serve you well. So mainly, when you pick up a power weapon like this, it turns into uh, basically you only having about one weapon. Because you really have to save it for those moments. So yeah, there's a beam rifle. I don't think I've actually used one in the campaign yet. I might have... I, no, wait. I did pick one up in that uh, mission where uh, we crashed the helicopter. And it was that giant UNSC assault. I did pick one up briefly, used it a little bit, and then dropped it because... I don't know, the beam rifle is basically a piece of crap. I don't really like it in this game. Especially comparing it with the other uh, beam rifles. Uh, from the previous Halo games, which were much better because they actually served as a sniper, not a laser weapon. So I think the main thing was um, I kind of wanted to give the aliens a little bit more of a change with the weapon and also um, kind of sneak in this, the sentry gun. I think, though. Yeah, the sentry gun, which was really, really crap in Halo 2. No one really ever used that weapon if it was on the map. Although I did troll a little bit, and <laughs> during some LAN parties... Uh, we did make a playlist where it was only sentry gun plasma pistol because easy enough you just take out their shield and uh, you know aim at their 
body and just take him out. So that was a pretty thro uh, pro throw right up there. <laughs> I actually did get that uh, beam rifle jackal up there. Not even meaning to. And then right here, I smacked him and then noticed he had a gravity hammer, so I had to quickly think. It's like, oh crap, I've got to run up and smack him again before he uh, smacks me with that thing. Probably would have taken my health down to about the red and my shield off. But yeah, you can see he's uh, suppressing us, but uh, easily enough to take him out with just three shots. It takes two shots to knock off their helmets, and then uh, <clears throat> one other shot to finish him off. So yeah, I was expecting more grunts, but I kind of threw him a little too early and missed uh, missed my chance to just shoot these, well, blow them up with grenades. So yeah. I don't know, what are you guys thinking about the Grunt Birthday Party Skull? And I can turn that off. I mean, it's not that important. But, I just put it there just for a little bit of fun, something unique. And the I Would Have Been Your Daddy Skull is on just for the extra dialogue from um, any of the Marines and uh, key characters that you will speak to, which is pretty sweet. I think that uh, adds a little bit to the game, so definitely worth it. I believe I collected all the skulls on Halo Reach. I'm not exactly sure, but I think I did. I usually collect all the skulls on every Halo game. Just no real reason, just just to do it, just because I've been doing it since the first... Well, did the first Halo? I don't think the first Halo had any skulls, but since Halo 2. first Halo had some... Um, oh, there he goes, taking out two Marines because they thought they were going to be beast with jetpack. And there, I missed the rocket horribly. I thought I was aiming it at the right spot, but apparently not, so whatever. But yeah, speaking of, uh, back in, what was I, Halo 2, was it? Oh, wait, Halo 1. The only real Easter egg in Halo 1 was, like, some hidden corridor or something with a uh, 2D picture, really pixelated, of some dude. You can look that up. Yeah, let's look at Halo 1, or Halo Combat Evolved Easter eggs. Pretty unique stuff, but not that important. There are a lot more in uh, Halo 2. <laughs> Halo 3 had some decent ones here and there, but I don't really remember. I did rebuy Halo 3. Um, I know, I could continue with uh, the Halo series, but after Halo Reach, I think it's a great time to kind of uh, take a break from Halo for a little bit. Because we did just do Combat Evolved, and then also hitting into Reach, so I think I need to kind of expand... Maybe less first-person shooters, although uh, those are a majority of the games I do have. Like, Fallout 3... I do have Oblivion again. Uh, we have Skyrim... Uh, Mass Effect 2. I don't have the first one anymore. I, do s I will say that Mass Effect 2 was probably my favorite Mass Effect, because I have not played Mass Effect 3 yet, and the whole controversy over the uh, on-disc... Uh, content or DLC or whatever it is uh, really is putting me off and I don't really want to buy and support a company that does that especially Capcom they've been recently doing that quite a bit on their uh, <clears throat> I think it was their uh, Tekken well, was it De Tekken's disc or was it oh, it was Marvel vs. Capcom I think some crap like that so uh, they really haven't been scoring any points with me, mainly because uh, they have not even bothered to release like a Monster Hunter in the North American uh, market, so I really couldn't give a crap. Because, uh, you know me, I love my Monster Hunter, unless uh, you're a new subscriber. Well, uh, I have videos on <laughs> Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, which begs the question, what should I? Should I actually do a Let's Play of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite? I mean, I could do Try because uh, Try is easy as crap compared to uh, Freedom Unite. So maybe, maybe I should do that. I don't actually own a PS3, so I can't do the ad hoc party, which is a bit of a shame. But well, what are you gonna do? I can't. Uh, I'm not, you know, full full of money. You know, <laughs> I wish I was. That would be awesome, because then I could try out, like, you know, the Uncharted series, which is uh, definitely a City great series on the, the PS3 from days. all the reviews I've read that and, uh, hand. you know, and kind of first-hand testimonials by uh, people that have actually played you know, it. We've all got orders to evacuate. I also would love to play yeah, Little Big Planet, like although uh, it would be cool for a while, and I need to find friends to actually do have those games to even uh, make it enjoyable. And definitely the custom maps are not going to be that great for you because, uh, you know how many 
you know how custom created content usually goes, it's just like a bunch of penis jokes everywhere. And uh, if you don't believe me, just look it up. <laughs> That's basically what a lot of uh, user-created content turns up to be because they think it's, well, it's, it's toilet humor, that's all it is. Yeah, I tried to take out that, uh, that brute, but it didn't do very well because he had a shield and armor. Takes a lot. So there we go. He's, his shield's down finally, and there we go. Finally enough uh, ammo spent just to kill one freaking brute. Now here I thought, like, wait, those are big, bigger than marines. It's like, must be <laughs> enemy so. I had to scroll, I'll kind of put the reticule over them just to make sure to so turn red. You gotta see a lot of red dots on the motion, or motion sensor, so I was wondering where they, when they pop up, so there we go. Taking out these sad banshees. Let's see a UNSC, uh, UNSC ship in the background. And there's uh, two war oh, wraiths here. I don't think I can, I don't think I'm able to take out that first one I aimed at, but uh, the second one I should be able to, I'm not exactly sure. I think the uh, Warhawks, yeah, the Warhawks take it out there. And that one I just keep spraying, because even though it doesn't show up red, you're still hitting it. And the more Banshees. And you can see over there in the distance, there's a... a Civilian transport ship trying to evacuate ci uh, citizens, but uh, sadly, these banshees got it. Oh my god! Mayday, or some mayday. it gets shot by something. It's not exactly the uh, <clears throat> banshees. So there we go. I never actually really noticed that until uh, until I started doing the let's play. For some reason, like you notice a lot of things that you usually don't when you're just playing the game without having to think about anything, because, to, to be honest, a lot of first-person shooters, it's just mindless shooting. There's nothing really big about it. <laughs> yeah, right here, the only main concern, yeah, you can see the Banshees, for some reason, they started crashing into the ground, um, very weird. So that one's suicide on the rock. And as you can see, uh, the... Uh, the shots coming in are from a raid. That is my main concern right now. <laughs> so, a uh, shotgun, definitely not useful for uh, taking out a wraith. I was really hoping for a plasma pistol right at this point so I could disable it and maybe run up and uh, come hijack, basically hijack the wraith for myself and start taking out the uh, rest of the guys. And this guy almost ran me over, this freaking uh, retard. But uh, yeah, I took him out of his driver's seat because uh, I don't think he should be driving. Yeah, there we go. They almost ran those guys over because they got in front. But here, um, basically, you just gotta take it slowly um, and kind of uh, not straight, but circle around the wraith so it can't get a uh, steady shot on you because it does t have a little bit of travel time for the uh, wraith shot to actually land. So as long as you keep circling around and not staying near walls where it can just shoot the back of it, you should be all right. Yeah, right over here, just scroll around. There's a there's a warthog right there. I don't know why he was shooting up there, because the wraith is the uh, biggest threat to us right now, so... A little bit weird. Yeah, it takes the wraith a little bit of time to recharge shots, so I just wait till he uh, shoots a little bit, and then I use the wall to my advantage. <clears throat> right here, probably a bad choice. He could have killed me, but uh, luckily he didn't, so we were able to take out the wraith right there. And that's all I really used the vehicle for, so... Right here, I get out and uh, kind of continue on foot because this is basically how I usually fight. I still have the jetpack, not as useful around here, but it still, you know, serves somewhat of a purpose. I mean, it can propel you forward just a little bit. So yeah, just melee hit these. It only takes two melee hits, and uh, that's easy enough. So. All we have to do is just activate this laser, and uh, that basically uh, kind of cuts it off for this part. So, hope to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play uh, Halo Reach. In the next part, we're going to continue on and uh, reactivate the second missile pad to uh, activate the anti-air defenses, and hopefully uh, it will protect the rest of the civilians. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.